sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UENradio.com. Okay, buddy. We call you free. Welcome to Universal Broadcasting Network's Hit Afternoon Show, bringing you the latest in music news, artist interviews, and more with your hosts, Lauren Dare Owens, Gavin Bailey, Ariel Fournier, and Adam Lusk. This is The Music Project. Hey everybody, uh, it's Lauren Dare Owens. It's Adam Lusk. Ariel Fournier, and you are listening to The Music Project. <laughs> we have a very exciting show today. We want to thank Garrett for yes. helping us get our guest today. Yes, My pleasure. <laughs> thank you. I, I, I'm, t- I'm turning to you. I, I want you to talk today. I want you I want you to speak, because the last couple of shows you've not spoken at all. You've just sat there quietly mm. and yeah, ran the board. Mics, large bands. That, that is very true. Instruments. But today you do have a mic, so... Utilize it. Use it with all your passion. He's focused. <laughs> all my passion? Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ariel, yes. tell us who we have on the show today. Well, we have James Hunting and Frank Simon. Sorry, is that how you say it? Okay. <laughs> we are all very excited to have you guys in the studio. Thank you so much again for coming out. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's great to be here. So, ever, I know everyone's journey through music and getting started is very different. Um, can you tell us how you each got started in music and what made you choose that? Jamie, I, I got started in church, like a lot of people did. Real yeah, close to a lot, a lot of people. Uh, yes, I got started in church, um, like a lot of people did, and uh, you know, the sound of the, the high, the cathedral ceilings really kind of intrigued me, and, and so did the, sis- the sisters that, two in particular, Sister Nikki and Sister Dorothy, that influenced me with their guitar playing. They're actually really great players, and wow. I just I just got in touch with one recently, uh, Sister Nikki, who was a big influence. My biggest influence, and uh, she was my third grade teacher. So oh, wow. she's playing bass now, concert <laughs> bass, and she has that's a whole great. orchestra of bass players. It's really cool. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, she's alive and well. Anyway, yeah. Well, I started singing in choir in second grade, and um, so that was uh, how I learned to read music mm-hmm. early on and uh, learn how to read notes and sing them. And then I also had a lot of music in my family. My Mother listened to R&B, like Ray Charles and the Drifters and Platters oh, yeah. and stuff like that. And my sister listened to Elvis and uh, some jazz, um, uh, Miles Davis and people like that. And then I started playing guitar when I was 10. <clears throat> and um, uh, my porch was my stage. <laughs> and I'd uh, play with my next door neighbor, Paul Metzger. I wonder if he's out there somewhere. <laughs> Maybe he's uh, and we were about 10 and 11, and we played a lot of Beatles and uh, Ventures and stuff like that. And that's how I got started. So it sounds like you grew up with a very musical family. Well, yeah. Um, actually, my sister played a little bit of guitar, but no one played anything extensively. They just listened I, to a lot Yeah, music. yeah. They listened to it. They, they were great appreciators, yeah. Now, you guys play several different instruments, but do you guys have, like, a favorite that you just really love the most? Guitars, probably. Guitar. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, my main instrument's guitar, but I play keyboards, I play bass, I play percussion, I sing, yeah. you know. Do um, it all. <laughs> whatever's available. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Some, some days it's a piano, you know, you spend some time at a piano, and other days you know, it's whatever you have available mm-hmm. to you. Guitars are always fun, though. So what is the, can you name all the instruments you know how to play? Well, most, most things with strings. Most things with strings. I wouldn't say I know how to play them, but I can make, I can make mm-hmm. music with them. You know, uh, if once you can, you know, unless you're using once a bow. Once you know one, you can kind of. Well, you know, when you get into the bowed instruments, some of the, you know, cello and stuff, it's a different ball game. But uh, so you have to learn a bowing technique. And uh, but no, anything with strings, you just you yeah. begin to pluck it and you know make make, make music. Sound. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Explore it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have a double bass in the corner oh. of my studio, and uh, so I play some of that. That's um, big. I play ukulele i play <laughs> guitar i play you know acoustic electric i have keyboards in my studio it you sounds know, so extremely similar to my studio that i have at my house we've got an upright bass upright in our bass corner. oh that chase uh, you around the house in the middle right. of the night right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have a cello now too oh, wow so 
And then in high school, I played um, um, clarinet okay. and some flute. So well, I, I never knew that. Wow. Yeah, I did. Clarinet. I played. Uh, yeah, I was uh, in, in a high school I, band playing. Clarinet. I tried learn. I tried learning how to play clarinet because mm-hmm. we have one at my house. My yeah. dad got it for free. Yeah. Um, somehow, but I tried learning and just squeak after squeak. After <laughs> squeak. Yeah, they call yeah. the, the licorice stick. Yeah. It, yeah. it all starts with like recorder when you're in third grade and you have to learn. Record. Yeah, That's yeah. my brother right now. And it's I, a, I, oh I, can't, yeah. I leave the house after two minutes of him practicing. You're watching, I can't. You're watching kids from school. It's like, what's in that little, what's that in that little suitcase yeah. they're carrying? It's like, what is that? <laughs> you know? Now, but the day my brother came out, I was like, I get to play the recorder. Like, I'm leaving. Um, I remember playing recorder. Better than triangle. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, <laughs> a torturous, there's a torturous <laughs> aspect to starting in music. Oh, you yes. know. Oh, yeah. um, some instruments worse than others. Oh yeah, some yeah, are especially with percussion. <laughs> oh yeah, some are that. more of a challenge throughout your life. Like the guitar, I think is a is a challenge. It's a it's a steady uphill climb mm-hmm. till you know. Yeah. Till the end of the horizon, yes. you know, as yeah. far as technique goes. The blues um, man against the world, you know. So. <laughs> Yeah. But keyboards, you can just put your fingers down and yeah. you can play a chord. You but know, then you have to make sure the one after right. that is but somewhat... To play it well is another matter, but at least you can get a sound <laughs> out of it. You don't have to worry about getting a sound off your bow or your you know armature or whatever, you know, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that is very true. That is... There are some that, that have a real steep um, learning curve in the beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Frank, besides being a musician yourself, you're, you also uh, were music director for the, for the Who. So That's correct. So how... How did you come into that role as well, and and what is it? What are like the different uh, responsibilities for those of um, the listeners who aren't familiar? Kind of what a music director does. Would you would you talk a little bit about that? Okay, well, it's a kind of a long story, and I'll try to make it as short <laughs> as possible. Uh, <clears throat> I was playing with Don Henley, and um, there was a famous film producer named Nigel Sinclair that was a fan of Don Henley's, but he was also a fan of mine. He used to buy seats right in front of me and watch me play every time I played in concert with Don. Anyway, a few years later, uh, Roger, was, Roger Daltrey was in town uh, putting together a charity band, and uh, he didn't like his guitar player, so he <laughs> fired him, and then he got another guitar player, and he turned out to be pretty good, but he was mainly a blues player, so he fired him as well. And he asked the band members, do you guys know anybody that can play this music? I mean, the who? And uh, the drummer, who I had previously hired for Don Henley, uh, Rob Ladd um, said, I know somebody, and, and well, who? Frank and uh, Frank Symes. And Nigel goes, oh, I know Frank Symes. I'm a huge fan of Frank Symes. Oh, he could definitely him. handle the role. So yeah, your name man. was already there. So, yes. Yeah. And so I came in, and, and, and uh, the, I came into, we, we, were, we set up a, a makeshift rehearsal room at a nightclub in West L.A., and uh, it was right out of, like, a David Lynch movie because it was, yeah. It was all foggy, and there was this one work, like a cone of white light, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and it was all sort of dusty and foggy in there. I don't know. That's awesome. <laughs> it was like a film set, and uh, Roger saunters in, mindlessly playing <laughs> Behind Blue Eyes, you know? You know? And uh, I go, well, I know that song. I hadn't met him yet, so I, I filed in. Uh, yeah. So... Uh, we started playing the song, and he kind of looks at me like, oh, you know it. Okay, well, then I'll just sing it. So he went in front of the mic and sang the song. I knew all the background vocals, so I sang it with him. And then after, after we played, there was, you know, we were surrounded by everyone else from the crew and from the band. They were all what, checking us out. <laughs> yes. This was my big audition. Hello. Yeah, around, yeah. <laughs> you around. nailed it. And I nailed it. And he looks at me, and he goes, well, that'll do. <laughs> and he re- awesome. reaches that's, out with his hand, and he goes, great. Roger. And I went, <laughs> Frank. <laughs> and he goes, I think we can work together. So that's how it started. And then I work with uh, Roger and uh, I put Tommy together for the Tommy Tour, World Tour of Tommy, and so I put all the music together for that, oh, wow. which was a big job. <laughs> and uh, what, do you, what do you exactly mean, put all the music together? Oh, well, see, someone has to be in charge of uh, playing all, you know, the Who's music is pretty complex, and yeah. uh, for rock music, it's probably one of the more most complex uh, pieces of, uh, you know, uh, kinds of music out there, and... Um, Plus, it's a recreation. You're not, you're not yeah, gonna... so I, I had to come up with a new concept, and the, what the Who hadn't done was to uh, do a live version of the record. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had never, you know, because they only had three vocalists, and sometimes there were up to six vocal parts <laughs> with the, yeah. the Who. So, I see the problem there. Right, so we had six members in the band, and uh, so we could cover all six parts. 
And, uh, you know, of course, everyone in the band could sing. And so we covered all six parts. I wrote out all the charts for the vocals. And there are a lot of vocals up to six parts, as yeah. I said, in Tommy. And so wow. I did all that and made sure all the chords were right, you know, on all the songs and all like. And so I so the, the job of a musical director is to make sure everyone's playing the right parts and singing the right parts and then sure. chart everything. And then if there's any tracks to to create, I generate those two. And also transitions in between the songs and things like that. Right. And the whole flow of the show. The whole flow of the show. You're creating the show and, you know, someone has to be in charge. And so I was that. And, and then the verses and the vocal parts that Frank said, John, John Entwistle, the bass player, was responsible for, you know, arranging and putting together. Ne- we're never repetitive. So you no. can't let guys get away with doing the same thing twice over yeah. the chorus or the verse or whatever. No. It's never repetitive. So it's tricky stuff. Hardly ever. Yeah, there's wow. it's it's variated throughout uh, if you uh, listen carefully, and I which I did, and you know those tracks, you know Tommy was done on eight tracks, and sometimes the vocals were on just one track, so you have yeah. to you know uh, do some deciphering of what the parts are and write them all out and make sure they're all right, you that know. Is, so that's astounding to me. So and it requires a lot of listening and a good ear to, because the smallest thing can. That's right. The term and the, you know. Details. I mean, my motto is, you know, the details are the product. Sure. You know, you, if you don't have the details, you haven't got anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that led me to, you know, so Pete Townsend came down and watched us rehearse and then, and then, um, uh, he wasn't uh, quite sure about me at first, but then when we started rehearsing, he realized everything was together for Quadrophenia and, uh. He was very pleased, and he said he wound up saying that uh, he has ha- uh, he uh, never had any more fun uh, since 1973. He said it's the most fun <laughs> he's ever had since 1973. Wow, that's so, awesome! That's great. So <laughs> just a great ball of fun. <laughs> yeah, so it was a big, big feather in my cap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, oh, go ahead. No, go. I was gonna say, how did you? to meet because you guys are mm-hmm. good friends you guys perform together we were in a car accident uh, we no. <laughs> 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 no, uh, all great friendships start that way <laughs> no it, 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 actually we, we met through music uh, i used to see frank playing pasadena he's in a group called the whiz kids and they were really a great band you know high energy and um, the first time i saw frank is at a place called handlebar saloon in pasadena and i thought he was Ed, eddie van halen because he, he had this he had the same hair frank had a huge head of hair <laughs> and the band was the band. I remember the songs, and I was a, a little bit younger than Frank, but I remember him very well. And uh, you know, a few years later, we'd end up playing together um, at, at local clubs, sitting in, and you know, eventually uh, recording together. And, and you know, we, we always got along musically. You know, and I, I've learned a lot from him. Uh, consummate professional, Frank is, and unpretentious. So we play a lot of uh, off the track gigs. You know, at, at different places where you wouldn't find guys like Frank or myself playing, uh, but just because we love to play, you, uh, you might find us anywhere, what, you know, depending on what night it is and if we're available. And we'll yeah, never you know. know where you might surprise someone. <laughs> that's that's fun, right. yeah, that's really true. People go, what are you, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're playing, you know. <laughs> yeah. Doing what you love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So over the course of your career, is there any you know defining moment that you would say would be like the highlight, the one thing that al- will always be memorable for you, that will always stay When we out? went to Japan... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, he had, see, uh, our bass player, John Button, in uh, the original bass player in Roger's band, uh, got in a motorcycle accident. Oh, wow. He was uh, working, uh, doing, uh, making Foley with a motorcycle, and he did a U-turn, and a car came, and he, and he was in a oh, wreck, and, uh, and it fractured his ankle in three oh, places wow. and his wrist. Very so that was yeah. three days before we were going to do a tour of Japan. And that's lucky for a motorcycle accident. Like oh, that's yeah. Like he yeah. could have easily been killed, yeah. yeah no, but he, uh, he, anyway, so we had to find a bass player or cancel the tour. Oh, my god. And goodness. they said, well, insurance will cover, but cover it if you cancel the tour, if we cancel the tour. But it'll be like a dark cloud, and I knew that, uh, you know hovering over us uh, for a long time. And so I said, well, I know the guy that could handle it. And uh, so I called Jamie, who is absolutely a genius bass player. Uh, (laughs) And uh, I say that absolutely objectively. (laughs) And uh, he is, you know, when he was uh, 19 or 20, he was uh, Phil Spector's uh, main guy, first first call bass player. I mean, just listening to him play uh, for five minutes and you'll see that he is nothing short of brilliant. I, I know I'm making him nervous I by saying this, first. but anyway, I'm <laughs> saying I heard it. it going, keep going, yeah, keep going. Yeah, sounds it's good, okay, yeah. okay, it's making me like, feel yeah, good. Going, <laughs> going. Yeah, yeah, so going. anyway, <laughs> he had to learn the entire Tommy in about twelve 
Who songs in 72 hours. So we um, got about three and four hours of sleep a night, and I work with them side by side, and we And we learned. had to get a work visa, too. You know? Not only did he have to learn all the bass parts, he had to learn all the vocal parts, too. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, um, you know, he had a big job, and uh, we went to Japan, and he succeeded. And he went on stage, and once he got his uh, in-ear situation together, <laughs> yes. everything worked out good. Yes, in-ears yes. make a huge I've heard difference. crazy yeah. stories about oh replacement people, and it, it's it's so hard. I mean, you don't really think about it. You're like, oh, they're, they're playing, but you actually have to get, you know, with yeah. a group that's been so tight for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite groups, Paramore, their drummer got in a golf cart accident. Oh, wow. Um, and the... It was really bad, actually. Like, it flipped yeah. over him, mm. crushed him, and then... Acid from the battery went on his face. Oh, like it was oh my a goodness! Horrible, a horrible. Like yeah. lost his ear. Like this whole big thing, and they had to get another drummer. Same thing. Like two days, learn twenty right. something songs. And it was right. right before they went to Dublin, right? Uh, yeah, right before they. Yeah. Dublin's a good same island. thing. <laughs> same thing. Friendly. Like right before they leave, you yeah. Can't wait till we go there. Two or three yeah. days just to get it. there, you know. Right. Um. But that yeah, to come. That's you know stepping yeah. in like that. Was it's uh, sometimes people get put in a situation. It was. Terrifying. Um, I was writing notes on the way to the stage for the first <laughs> show, and uh, um, that's where just years of playing and being used, you know, I'm used to playing, but mm -hmm. it's very intimidating. But um, the worst part about it was my in ears, uh, my monitors um, weren't there when we walked out on stage. Oh, wow. So it was, uh, you know, somebody had to go get them and bring them to me. Otherwise, you know, we everybody used the in ear monitors like headphones, and uh, so we stood there. <laughs> 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 on stage, you know, forgot. it seemed like an eternity, but uh, oh yeah. That's so funny. finally, my ears came, and, and we started the concert like, you know, counted it off and just went to it like yeah. it was nothing, uh, no big deal. And there's a, there's actually a recording. There's a two disc set uh, that uh, is, is uh, available. So you can get it through his website in Japan called Circle of the Sun, Roger Daltrey, and it's is it was a live recording of that first show mm -hmm. at the Tokyo Forum on uh, April twenty fourth, I think it was, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and and so so somebody bought it from me for oh, really? for me in Europe and sent it to me, mm -hmm. and I just I, I I didn't listen to it for a little while. I just sat there and looked at it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was there. I remember what happened, and I didn't you know, uh, um, you know it, it actually when I listened to it, it it, it sounded uh, I did a good job. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm very hard on myself, and 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 there's lots, so much to memorize, but it's there. And uh, but that that long pause in the beginning is really How long funny. Was it really? Well, the guy, the guy, uh, it was probably about a good two, two minutes at least. So yeah. was it wasn't really like that long. It was a two minutes on stage. It feels eternity. Two but minutes on stage yeah. after they, after eternity. they, w after you walk out on stage and and the applause drops, it's a, it's an eternity. <laughs> yeah. It really is. I just <laughs> yeah. want to get a show under and my belt. And the applause belt. drops yeah. as well. Right. It was so it was just quiet as a pin. You could hear your pin drop. It. Oh, jeez. Because you know, Japan, Japanese audiences are are very respectful and they listen and they they, they don't. Uh, they, of course, they make noise, but they, they, you know. They, they quieted down like something, you know, not everybody yeah. knew what was going on yeah. because I was tabbed my back and I was going, Get my head here, you know, <laughs> yeah. pointing, motioning toward my ears that I didn't have them. So, but, but uh, you know, we, we got on with it and everything was fine. But, no. uh, there, but the, yeah, the, what's cool about it is the second disc, I look at the second disc and track one on the second disc is introducing Mr. Jamie Hunting. <laughs> 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 I had, like I have my own, my own song on, oh, on a Roger Daltrey awesome. awesome. record. Yeah, it's kind of really strange, but uh, kind of serendipitous. Well, you talked a little <laughs> bit about um, how, how playing in Japan was different. Is there any other places? Because you guys have toured all around the world. So is it a, a totally different experience everywhere you go? It is. Or Fans are different. Uh, um, it, it is. It's it's um, totally different. Japan is a really special place. Frank's uh, family is from Japan. He was born in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? I'm happy. And, yeah. and, and uh, I'd, I'd been to Japan in the early 80s um, and played a uh, had a wonderful time there. I have a great love for Japan. So mm -hmm. we shared so that. Mm -hmm. And, w you know, someday, someday. Yeah, it was our dream. Someday to go there go together. To Japan together, Aww. you know. So, so that you, you asked that question earlier. Was that, one of the, that was one of the highlights. Because we're just through the whole, after the first show, it's like, we, you know, we did it. We you know? did it. <laughs> oh, that's I, I, so great. For, we, we made Frank, Frank's word wasn't bad. He, um, he brought in a guy that could do it, you know, in very little time. And mm -hmm. we were, you know, we were celebrating. And, yeah. and on top of that, we were in Japan together. Yeah. So here's, you know. <laughs> But you know, it's, it's not a cool way to to walk into a gig when another guy's in, injured. John Button, uh, but he was he had to stay home and recuperate. It was the best yeah. for his health. Flying at that altitude, mm -hmm. with with those injuries, it wasn't cool. No. So I just yeah. did the we we you know we did the best we could yeah. and and to keep the, uh, the so the people could see the show in Japan. It was a, a lot of right. a lot of fun. 
Roger asked me to s- translate everything he said in Japanese, <laughs> yeah. which yeah. I had never done before on stage. Yeah. <laughs> so he put me on the spot, but I did okay. They were all amazed. They go, where did he learn his Japanese? He doesn't have an accent. Well, What's going on here? Frank hardly skipped a beat because j- when, you, when you speak English, like we're speaking, to translate it to Japanese is quite different because in, in, in Japanese, the, you start with the object and you... Yeah. Do you work forward to the mm-hmm. subject? So it's the, uh, quite, quite it's backwards, different. you know. Everything's, uh, uh, you know, you start with your object. Yeah. And, and so he's trying to, Roger's talking and, and Frank's busy trying to, t- you know, <laughs> translate it, decipher <laughs> it and speak it out over the microphone and uh, as Roger's talking and yeah. Roger's using all kinds of slangs and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I keep saying, well, that is untranslated, you know. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. can't translate that. No. You know. But Frank, Frank did it, you know, pretty much effortless. He you know, <laughs> speaks very good Japanese and... Uh, can you speak any other languages? A uh, little bit of French. A little bit of French. Yeah, yeah enough, to get a, enough to get by. Yeah. yeah. I, I, me, I enough to get slapped. <laughs> 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 you, know, you have to, you know, now that we have translators on all our smartphones and there you go, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's no excuse for not learning how to greet people in different languages yeah. if you wish to, you know. Always, when you go to a different country, try and observe their customs. And uh, it's respectful and oh, yeah. uh, because they pay attention. They really do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's important, especially yeah. the dinner table. Um, they don't hate you. They just, it's a way to gauge things, how, how you know. Yeah. And uh, Japan is a place where that happens a lot. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. It's just the way it is. Well, I think we're going to play a song called Life's a Rocket. Oh, right on. <laughs> Here we go. Sometimes. <laughs>
we're back. So can you tell us a little bit about that song? And um, oh, Life's a Rocket. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's about the ups and downs of um, relationships, about um, falling in love and falling out of love. Newton's, Newton's and uh, so, law of gravity. Uh, <laughs> the first uh, verse is about the good one, and the second one's about the bad one. Yeah. <laughs> and so that it's, explains um, it. yeah. life's like a roller coaster. Life's like a rocket. Goes up and down. Comes Goes up and then comes back down. <laughs> Roll with the punches, man. It's dynamic. But yeah. we, actually, we, we were playing around in Frank's studio one night, uh, and we play, often play off each other and, and playfully, and we started playing this riff, and it's it's just a riff, which is what, kind of a what riff. What is it? And, and it, it's, 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 it's just a movable riff. It's, that is not no no chords. It's just yeah. And it's kind of you know you think you hear chords behind it, but I mean it's it's mainly written around this riff. So that's what we started with it's just bending, st- making a real rubbery sounding, and we were just laughing and smiling, and and and, and so you know it took took over from there. And uh, Frank put some lyrics to it, and uh, brilliant lyricist Frank is. So how do you do that, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's great, it's all, it's awesome, man. You know. So uh, you guys are amazing musicians, just from like. Thank watching you. you guys play, Thank you. watching you warm up a little bit. How long have you really guys been playing your instruments? For example, you with bass and then you guitar, well, all the I, ones in your hands. Go ahead. Well, I, I've been playing the bass. I, I got my first electric bass um, begging and, you know, this is long <laughs> after. I used to go downtown and, and, and go from music shop to music shop until they'd, like, ask me to leave. And I'd sit down, <laughs> I'd sit down in a chair and play all the basses because the Fender basses were it. Any yeah. bass, actually. Um, that happened uh, for a couple of years at least before I was able to buy my first bass in like in the 75. But I'd say I started in maybe 72. Um, but I was playing guitar in 70, 71. Uh, started on the baritone ukulele. And yeah. gra- one granddad played the ukulele. The other granddad played the, the, the banjo. So we got a ten- wow. tenor banjo, ukulele, guitar. My One grandma of mine was a piano player. The other was an organist. My mom was a singer. There's music around. Yeah. That's um, awesome. So when he was two, in other words. He, when he was yeah. two. Yeah. Wow. Um, I was born with a bass in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> you came out I rolled out of the womb yes, with a guitar. Yeah, swing yeah. <laughs> swinging the four string, man. Yeah. Well, I started playing guitar when I was 10, and you know, I had a band when I was 12. We played uh, junior high school dances and stuff like that, and oh, talent cool. shows. Honestly, that's been actually you know, one of my dreams, is what? to play school prom with a band. <laughs> really? Right on. Like, I'm not well, going to lie. They don't have bands anymore, right? <laughs> I, they use DJs, and it right, bumps I know. me out. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, they like, should go back to bands. I, I agree. Okay. But like music videos that I often see, like uh, for a band that is the first one that came to my head is Fall Out Boy. One of their music mm-hmm. videos called Dance Dance. It's them playing a high school prom. Mm-hmm. And I'm oh, like, right, I right. want that yeah. so bad. Right, right. Like but the, yeah, that'd be really cool. Like it is special to play at your, you know, big <laughs> high school event, you know, at homecoming. Your, or you manage your own your own school, right? You yeah. yeah. I want to do that at my own school. Actually, oh, yeah. probably not at my own school because I go to a, a strange 500 student school. But more like <laughs> I want to go to like a 1200 student mm-hmm. school. I went to a 17 student school <laughs> for high school. 17 what, what students, 1700. In the whole high school. So oh. I, go, I go to a one person high school. If I, <laughs> <laughs> school. It's a really, really home school. experimental school. We have about 200. Oh, yeah. Well, we, have, we actually have a program. So we do have. Yeah, the program is like 200 people, yeah. but mm-hmm. Lauren's teacher has like five students. Five. Oh. So. Oh, they're, they're lucky they are then. Uh, yeah. 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 But, but, uh, well, you guys so. actually have a show coming up uh, December 14th. Would you tell our listeners a little bit about that and how can they find information and go and. Uh, yeah, it's in Laguna <laughs> Beach at a place called Mozambique, and we're playing on December 14th. Been showtime. Is that a Tickets. Saturday? Yeah. yeah, I think it is. And showtime. Yeah, it is. Showtime is uh, 9 o'clock. Probably 9, yeah. Tickets? No, there's no Free? charge, and unless it gets overcrowded, and then they start charging at the door. It's what about really, Sometimes really cool there's place. a line. Get early. Um, yeah. yeah, I get there early, grab a table. They have great food, and the um, people who go there are really nice. So Age limit? Uh, I th- well, they allowed people to come under 21, but... Um, Garrett, Garrett's been there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can... There's a restaurant part, and you can go in there and hear the music, but, but they play can. near closer to the bar, so to be in there, you gotcha. have to be 21. But you can listen I mean, outside. I could pretend to be 21, just, right? Yeah, just paste the mustache on it. It's okay. You <laughs> <laughs> just grab a table in the dining room. Yeah. yeah. So, awesome. A uh, question that I've been wondering is, you know, since you guys started playing, music has evolved so much. There's so many different genres and people who are coming and you know it, sure. it sounds like for a while there it sounded like instrumentation of music just kind of was gone it was all electronic and i feel like it's starting to you know come back and it's becoming more common um mm. how do you guys feel about the evolution of music and where it's gone from when you guys started well, well now well nowadays 
Everybody so. may be getting back to the old basics of not having playing electronic instruments, but stringed instruments are, are more natural. But it's being recorded and mixed electronically, uh, be it Pro Tools or Cakewalk or whatever uh, sequencing software you're using. You can do anything once you get it into the computer, and uh, is, as long as you get an honest performance with you know that's not done digitally or by a computer. You know, there, you have some feeling there. So it's really c kind of the best of both worlds, you know. Well, my thought is that it's come a full circle. I, I think pe musicians and producers got the wrong idea that everything had to be perfectly in tune and perfectly in boring. line with the grid, yeah. and it became really boring. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you do an experiment with violins and you tune all the violins, it sounds like one bad violin. <laughs> it sounds like one bad synthesizer is what it sounds yeah. like. And so you don't want them in tune. And then not perfectly. Within a certain latitude, it should be a little bit out of tune. Yeah. That's what gives it a human quality. And it gives it the and full that's sound. That's what those, that's what those yeah. notches are on the side of when you turn on your tuner. Those little notches on each side, they're called cents. Interesting. They should be off by a few cents. And yeah. uh, same with vocals. You know, uh, we're used to hearing vocals all in tune all the time. All the drums are perfectly in line. Well, if you look at... The, on a grid, if you look at the, some of the greatest music, like the Beatles, the Stones, the Led Zeppelin, yeah. the Who, they don't, they never saw a grid. Everything's popping they're all over there. the place, but that's what make, gives it a thick valley of, right. a, of, a, of a beat. Very you important. Know, very I just, of a pulse. That's actually what I was, I was talking to a, groove, um, a producer when sure. I was in Nashville, and he said the same exact thing. He was talking about, you know, he's like, we were working on a demo. He's like, you know, if I have to tune and you know a note here or there, it's not because you're not a good singer. It's just because when back when bands like Queen and people were around, when you people tune, they'd be you know, give me an E, and so everyone would tune to what they heard that note mm -hmm. sounding like. But now that you have electronic tuners, it's follow the green line and. Mm -hmm line up so at that time everything sounded a little bit different everything wasn't 100 percent in tune and that's yeah. what made the best music that's what made it sound better and mm -hmm. i think people are coming to understand Fatter that you know full, yeah. like uh, dave grohl for instance you know no more pro tools Favorite. and he <laughs> goes you know my as a producer my uh, rule is play it as as well as you can but don't make it any better yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, watching so Sound City and watching, hearing him say that, you know, and using, you know, making the album in 2012, mm -hmm. using all analog recording, yeah, right. that was, a, you know, truly a change, you know, a, cha a game changer just sure. because, you know, you're taking all, you know, music and putting it out in current, present day, right. but using that old recording technique, which... Plus, you know, the, to watch an engineer or somebody in the in the recording room splice tape and I go, they go, whoop, 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 we go back and forth to the tape. It's kind of cool. It's tedious work. Yeah. And I, I don't know how many uh, uh, recording students that are coming out nowadays really know how to splice tape. It's kind of like an old art uh, to get it perfectly cut. And because uh, now you just push, you know, it's all at the keyboard, the computer keyboard. But it, there's some special techniques to the thing. Sorry to interrupt. The no, thing okay. that I think is amazing about um, old, like the the literally splicing the tape and actually cutting it mm -hmm. and then putting it, uh, taping it together, is that you really only got one shot at it. Yeah, that's right. Like with measure, measure twice, cut once. <laughs> yeah, with uh, that's great carpentry rule. Yes, my it dad's is. a carpenter as well. But um, with modern recording studios um, and modern rec recording softwares, I mean, uh, like that I use sometimes. Um, I mess up a cut and then I'm just like control Z yeah. back to <laughs> undo back where or if I you was realize that's perfect ago. you can just put back in it's right. not this right change it, you can easily fix it we're back that you couldn't mm -hmm. that's right well I know you guys are gonna play a live song for us that's right what is it which one are you gonna it's play? Uh, called touch and go awesome all so right. here we go. Right here here we go. Can I? Ready? Oh, one second. We're going to fix some mics real quick just Change so we can it up. Yeah. mic up your instrument. Make sure we can hear everything. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we want to hear those beautiful instruments. Mix. Garrett's got it all. I'm good. Okay. So are we good? We are good. Should we do it? Yeah. Ready? Whenever one, two, you're ready. Two, one, two, three. Oh. Boy meets a pretty girl and soon they take the leave Hearts all are fluttering, they start to lose their sleeve But nobody cares when nobody knows that she'll fly How they make promises, ones they may not give 
Sometimes they wonder how it ever got so deep Neither one wonders and neither one knows they should fly Faith in their eyes will surely make a grown man cry And love is touch and go Oh, our fingers touch and then let go And hearts will touch and go Oh, our humans touch and then let go It all may be different when the morning comes Life dolls out carelessly, emotions opium Neither one wonders and neither one knows that you'll fly Faith in their eyes will surely make a grown man cry And love is touch and go oh Says that we can find a way to live. There's no need to drown or jump up again. He says that no one knows when winds will shift and who will be the first and who will be the last to know. Neither one wonders and neither one knows that she'll fly. Faith in their eyes will surely make a grown man cry. And love is touch and go. Oh, oh. And fingers touch and then let go. And hearts will touch and go. Oh, oh. Our humans touch and then. Let go oh, 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 oh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Awesome. So oh, I think man. we're going to play uh, another one of the songs that you sent in okay. called Hollywood Friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.
All right, Garrett claimed first question. Okay, so you guys have worked with some of the most talented people in rock and roll, mm. <laughs> famous and relatively unknown. Who were some of your favorite uh, musicians, singers, just artists to work with? This the is the time to name drop everyone. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here it goes. <laughs> Get out the alphabet. Okay. Well, Mick Jagger was my absolute favorite. He was always happy. He's as big an icon as he is happy. And, <laughs> and that is rare. Mm-hmm. in this business yes because most people i think don't handle celebrity well mm-hmm. and uh you know he's as famous as he is happy i you know if you're if you can't get to know him unless you're in the inner sanctum but once you are he's your best friend Aww. he's like come on let's go dancing let's oh, go let's awesome. go you know we were just down the street we were recording ocean way in ocean way studios next door and he goes frank you want to go eat you know you know any good restaurants i said do you like thai he goes sure let's go hop in my car and i'm driving down sunset with mick jagger <laughs> <laughs> that's going awesome. to now that's a song the right there. It is. Yeah. Yeah, most people Drive can't say with that. Mick. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> so, you know, he, he's really a down to earth, wonderful guy. Yeah. Yeah. Spreads, spreads joy so wherever he goes. That's always probably my favorite thing to hear is mm-hmm. that the, the celebrity ism or ness of <laughs> someone doesn't go to their head and that they're super down to earth and that they're always super nice. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's, it'd be impossible for it not to go to their head, but they have to process it properly oh, yeah. and yeah. give it back. And, you know, some guys you might catch in a bad day, you know. I, yeah, I, work, I work with some prickly guys, but, uh, and they have bad days, you know, and you can't crucify them for having a bad day. Everybody has them, but celebrities seem to be noted for their bad days and, and, and they're in the spotlight all the time and they're not perfect people and it's not easy to do what they do traveling m- m- you know music and on the road you're away from home it's it's a, it's a, it's hard it's not for everybody but uh, I feel uh, like it's also when you the younger you are and as you grow into it because if you're if you're young it's hard because you're like oh now I'm this popular person you haven't really grown into it but as you grow up that way you I think you really get it that's why like whenever you know we book a show or a part I like okay great go take out the garbage yeah. <laughs> you know, go go <laughs> Do something, you know, go be a person. And Put don't, your feet back you down. Still, yeah, 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 you still got... <laughs> go clean your room. Don't, you know, don't yeah. pretend like you're, you know, cool now. But when, <laughs> you're out, when you're out playing and traveling, you have, you know, 40, 50 guys relying on you to be there yeah. the next day. You go out partying one night and hitting a little hard, you know, and thinking mm-hmm. you're, you know... Uh, it's important that you make it back and sometimes things can happen and, and uh, that's where you have to grow up quickly because yeah. there's a lot of guys that are relying on you, you know, that, to be there and, and you can get in a lot of trouble mm-hmm. being in, not being around not being used to a place and there's always strangers and oh, yeah. you know uh, it's very important when you're part of a crew you know it's, it's not the, it's not the individualism you, I mean you are expected or guys are relying on you it's no joke it's business and there's a lot of money at stake you know yeah so it using that same thing it is, it amazes me like how people like um axel rose mm-hmm. would show up an hour late to a show right and get away with it it I amazes mean, do, me he's he, still well, alive he, <laughs> he did <laughs> that with, with the you rolling know. stones and and, and and steel wheels and does Izzy he and axel were, you know they were you, late and they really pissed those guys off you pay for it eventually i mean you know you you um you know piss enough people off you know you, you, you know you they're just not going to be behind you you know they're yeah. You know, come on, get it together. You it's kind of respons- like the three rule, here. you know, three chances, all, you know. It, without this, uh, you know, link in the chain, we're nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we all have to play a role, you know, so yeah. get with it, you know. Yeah, you don't keep the Rolling Stones. <laughs> keep it in the image department. <laughs> don't do it in exactly. real life. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, I, f- I mean, I feel that's a big thing of it is, you know, you get a number of chances. You know, the first time you're late, okay, that's, we'll a, make it a work. Mulligan. Second time get your act together three people are just kind of over it and then yeah. you get start getting pegged for the yeah. bad things you do sure. and no one's looking That's at right. the positive impact you're making it's a, it's so. a, it's a lot it's a, it's a lot harder to get out of that hole and right. to yeah. redeem yourself if it's even possible but hey the f- best person i've ever worked with uh 
uh, was quite is quite different as Sammy Davis Jr. when I was in Japan, wow. and and Great. and there's very few people I've met that are actually cooler in person. <laughs> <laughs> Real, I mean, uh, stars, you know, That's prominent right. stars, and and uh, th- this man was uh, even hip hipper in every every way, ha- happier, nicer, more fr- wow. you know friendly, and we're, we're sitting there, and the guy made you feel like you're an old friend. And yeah. And and I was you know many years as junior, but yeah we had uh, you know that's my guy. He uh, was amazing, you know, good guy. Now and when you meet these type of people and and they they are like that, you, you go now and understand why they are who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, yeah, he's Sam Davis Junior is mine. And well, that's why I think these people who are you know celebrities the these days are <laughs> getting younger and younger and younger. And that's also because of the you know reality shows that are putting people in the spotlight. That's why I think that they need to look back at all the old. <laughs> People who've kind of just grown up in the spotlight because mm-hmm. they know how to handle it. They've, you know, mm-hmm. they, you get to an age where you just you get it and you know how to handle it and you use that for the rest of your life. And that's why I think, you know, these 16, 17 year olds who are getting to be, you know, number one on the charts should look back at that because it's really going to help them someday. Well, the media has actually given them given young people a, a, a chance to be in the spotlight at a young age, yeah. a lot more than ever. When our parents were y- younger, it was like this is grown up stuff, man, to, you know. You got to sit this one out, but now, now uh, with the media being as popular as it is, mm-hmm. uh, all of the different bands and, and uh, like bands, there's so many young people playing in bands, and everybody can play. There's some really great players. I mean, when I was young, I couldn't get a bass for you know what you can get a guitar at Guitar Center. You know, it was much different. You know, but uh, yeah, there's a lot more people that are c- focused on entertainment and you know rather than I mean, uh, I don't hate to say scholastics. Uh, yeah, but, uh, all all three of us. Mm-hmm. Are sort of in that boat, mm-hmm. yeah. Of just complete. I mean, I am because I'm sort of letting my grades slip now, which is not a good thing. No, well, bad. Well, okay. I'll lecture you later about oh, that. They can slip up and down. You know, it's hard to focus yeah. on everything. I yeah. mean, you know, you you want to be focused, oh, yeah. but you know, you you only have so much energy, and then yeah. you just collapse. Yeah, that's you know, and then so well, you had to study for that math test and. Well, I work till two in the morning. Yeah, you know, that's how am I going to do that? That's well, you know. just punch the test in on my through my computer with my computer whiz friend and <laughs> change the grades and. <laughs> <no>. Well, that's <laughs> you when you have to depend on that extra bundle of brain power, you know, and mm-hmm. just get through it anyway somehow, you know. And that's why you have to have an understanding with the people around you, with your parents, with your teacher, with your soccer, co- whoever you know, whoever's in your life, and just say, you know, something that's really important to me. I hope you understand. I hope you mm-hmm. can help me work through this. Uh, currently going through that with my teacher, who's <laughs> not as understanding. Hard. Fong Fong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fong Hong. That's her name. Fong Hong. Um, Fong but no, like, you know, she doesn't understand the music thing, so I've tried to explain, you know, I was like, I went to Nashville for a week. I'm working on my work as much as I can, but I'm also getting up at 7, leaving the house, seems 7.30, getting back at 10.30, going to sleep. Like, I'm trying to, you know, fit everything in, just working with the people around you so they really understand how mm. much effort and time you put into this, you, you know? You get, get credit for that somehow. I'm working on it. If only, <laughs> right on, right if on. only like... Travel and music was a course at my school. Sure. <laughs> there you go. We'd get straight A's. A's. Yeah, straight A's. Yeah. Straight A's. But after so many miles, well, you begin to go, you know what? I want to sleep in my own bed for once. Yeah. Yeah. See my yeah. own, for, you know, my local friends or see what's going on around the neighborhood and you're far away. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, you were talking about, you know, having to uh, disperse your energy so much yeah. in school and all that. And I think the important lesson is about taking responsibility. Y- you know, if if you make a choice to put your energy into your your uh, art your yeah. your your uh, acting or your mm-hmm. singing or whatever it is that's the choice you make and as long as you're focused i think that's the discipline yeah. to, to learn that's the lesson to to learn you know if you're focused about it yeah. that's what's more important than getting that a instead of the c on the math test i think <laughs> yeah you know? especially if you're happy doing it because yeah. if you're straining yourself so much that it's it's losing the fun aspect of it there's no point in doing it and you should be going back to doing school but you see people like adam and lauren who are off constantly and ariel who are always out doing stuff oh you guys and they're trying to like yeah they're they're putting the effort into their music and their recording and going to shows and all that and maybe grades do slip not sure for ariel (laughs) she's graduated she's good yeah she's she's good but i mean the issue yeah. is for me is that the yeah. music is more fun than the school. <laughs> yeah. That's always the problem. But no, I <laughs> sure, think I think sure. it's definitely that there's many people who want it. Yeah. Who really want it. I know mm-hmm. probably when you're kids, that's all, you know, I want it. But there's only a certain amount of people who apply it. 
and or get it concentrate <laughs> and yeah, yeah and who work hard don't. enough to get it everybody there's a lot more people working hard harder and harder and harder for the same goals it's getting more competitive same thing is with music or anything there's a lot more people that are high, very focused on what they want and you're, you're looking at some tough competition. If you think that it, you're going to be a, a, you know, a wonderful instrumentalist, and, and there, there are many out there, young people that can really play their butts off, uh, and, and I don't need the school and all that. You may not, but I mean, it certainly helps to have it because, uh, you know, it's a backup plan. It's it's just too much to put on the line when you're even at, you know that you're good enough to where you don't need to learn anything in school because, yeah. you know, l learning to be an instrumentalist or a guitarist or a bassist, there's it's a, it's its own curriculum. You're going to learn a lot of lessons, patience. You know, uh, you're going to learn all the lessons you need to learn yeah. and. Uh, um, Respect, you know, uh, all the, the things that people would want to teach you uh, cr um, how to treat other people. You know, you learn to listen, you learn, you know, um, work with other people musically. It's not a s when you're in a band, you don't work by yourself. You're working with other people. That's what musicianship yeah. is about. And you have to learn to get along with people. Sometimes on the road, there's some guy in the band that you don't really care about and you have to live on the bus with. <laughs> <laughs> and you, don't, you don't like this guy at yeah. all. No, nothing about him. And, and, but you have to make music with him and, and be mm. professional and get along with it. You know, most, most of the time, People get along, but you know, you yeah. cooped, on a, cooped up on a tour bus with a bunch of guys like, say, Vince Neil. When I was under the Vince, <laughs> he's not Mickey Mouse, and I'm not Donald Duck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love Vinny, but I mean, it, it gets tedious. So, oh yeah, yeah. You know, it, mm -hmm. it helps a change of uh, like Guns and Roses. Vince Neil of Molly Crew. That you were on tour with him? Yeah, I was. <laughs> Yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I played, the, I played the E string for two years <laughs> complete, man. The E string. <laughs> so one more question before we have to yes. wrap up. Um, for all young musicians out there who you know are trying to pursue this, what advice do you give? You know, because we have a lot of we have a lot of listeners who you know are into music and that whole thing. And what is your advice to them for starting off? Um, good luck and happy <laughs> trails. But uh, whatever you do, if you're going to play. An instrument just play it with love you know and and that's all just play it with love that way you're you're rewarded you're exercising your heart learn to play your own heart admire ev everybody else but learn how to do it your own way you know because everybody has their own uh way of saying things and and, and just because this person you know admire their technique and all but you, you know you you, you come up, come up with your own thing so play with love and, and, and nobody will can ever deny that real love if you play with love you'll be all right i like that mm -hmm. Well, my advice um, to uh, adults and kids alike, I think, is, uh, as I said earlier, the details are everything. Mm -hmm. um, I think Charles Eames, famous architect, uh, uh, said, and it's a misquote of his because he says something about details, but it's not what I say. But I say the details are the product, and what you put forth is about the, your details. And so that's uh, a corollary to, well, then you have to be focused, and focus is everything. And it's not about the success. It's not about the results. Yeah. It's about what you put into it mm -hmm. that counts because success is mostly a myth anyway. Mm -hmm. It's an illusion for the outsider, the audience, mm -hmm. you know, the people watching you. They go, mm -hmm. wow, you're so successful. Yeah, yeah but you don't know I'm in a million dollars in debt. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Wow, well, you drive a fancy car, but, you know, and it's so It's when you so feel forth. like you've made it. Right. It's, about, like you've it's it. about what you put into it. It's not about the results. Yeah. And so I think love. that's important. Mm -hmm. And the third thing I think is... Um, it's that it, about enthusiasm, and it's about, uh, I think it was uh, Emerson who said, uh, he said, nothing great is ever achieved without enthusiasm, <laughs> and I think it's absolutely true, but where do you get that enthusiasm? What Jamie said, if you love it, then you get enthusiastic. Yeah, it can't, but, can't be denied. <coughs> but you, saw, you always see people, you know, in, in a room like you're working with, and they're like trying to drag you mm -hmm. down, and you go, and they're pulling away from you, they're taking away ex from your enthusiasm, well, those people don't belong in the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you guys so thank much. Thank you it guys was so much again. Thank I think we all us. learned a lot. And so thank you so much for coming in and talking to us for this hour. Um, guys, remember, uh, next week we have a show at 5 p.m. We're doing a little bit later in the day. Make sure to use the hashtag I am five music project so you can come in and be in the studio with I am five as they do their interview. We all know you girls love them. We all know it. So please use the hashtag um, on Twitter and we will um, be picking two random winners to come into the studio with us. So, yay. Yeah. Contact. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Social media sites. Social media sites. How to, how to reach us real quick, Frank? Um, right. Lisa Verlo, L-I-S-A-V-E-R-L-O, at Symes Corp, 
dot com. That's my last name plus corp. S I M E S C O R P dot com. And me, on, you can look me up on Facebook, Jamie Hunting. Like the middle name is Went. Uh-huh. And I'll be there waiting. Uh-huh. Yes. All right. Well, well thank you. Everyone, guys. check them out. You, you have your show um, at Laguna Beach yeah. on but December fourteenth. Mozambique. 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 Got it. Mm-hmm. Everyone, go check that out. Uh, we are over time. So. <laughs> My name is Lauren Darrows. I'm Adam Lusk. And I'm Ariel Fournier. And this has been The Music Project. Right on.
Hey listeners, are you interested in animals great and small? Do you want to help preserve, conserve, and protect with love, dignity, and respect? Then you are going to want to tune in to Animal Magnetism. 